John Parker Romo will kick it off. The Houston team that's favored by six and a half points in this game. They started the season 4 0, but they've lost three straight. And week eight underway from San Antonio. Dejan Lee, a solid return and a spin, but he gets stood up at the 29 yard line. So you heard Chris ask about Cole McDonald and Brandon Silvers. McDonald, a run first guy, had started last week, and now it's Silvers, who was starter the first four games. They were 4 0. Last two games, well, a lot less efficient. He has great feel for the offense and has played a lot of football at the professional level. He's been around it, he understands it, and his ability to process is what separates him from Cole McDonald. He's also a lot more consistent with his accuracy, so it's big for the Roughnecks to have him back Go. under center. He'll right. throw on first down, pulled it back, and then was able to find Deontay Burnett. And it's a pickup of five on first down. A.J. Smith is the offensive coordinator. Pardon me, said he was out of bounds and incomplete before he secured it. This is going to be a pass-first offense. It is. That's really who they are. As you can see, Delonte Scott, however, number 45 for San Antonio, their best defensive player limping off after the first defensive snap. San Antonio's defense has been its strength. They lead the league in points per game allowed. Silvers to the slant, and that's incomplete. Got to find Bryson Aline. A little off the mark from Silvers. He's been nursing a throwing arm injury. Some have said it's an elbow. Some have said it's a tricep. Either way, hasn't had a ton of repetitions being limited at times in practice this whole week. Third and ten for Wade Phillips' offense. man rush Silvers delivers it on time and that's good for a first down to Justin Smith nice timing here on the curl flat you see man coverage you know you have to put it right on the receiver's body it's pretty good coverage there defensively from Ryan Lewis but the accuracy from Silvers on display there for the first down conversion these same teams met in wake week three, a Houston win in Houston. Offensive coordinator A.J. Smith says we want to get back to that Trips same plan of attack. Up. Trips left up, red F option dog. Now last time the corner trapped the hitch, so Z take an outside release. Brandon be looking for that trap corner, and then down the baby on the F. Hey, red F, red F option, one, right? It's a lot of instruction. And he's talking about this corner up here to the top with his eyes inside. But right here, it looks like man coverage for San Antonio. Second down incomplete and a really slow start for Silvers. Just two for five. No. Go turbo, turbo, turbo. Trips left, purple. Turbo, turbo, trips left, purple. Go, go, go. Line up. Trips left, purple. When you hear purple, there's no offensive play called here. They're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and diagnose the defense. And right here, it's looking like two man from San Antonio. Got San Antonio to jump. Silvers will get taken down. But it'll turn into a free play as Mike Scott jumped off sides with the hard cadence. Offside number 44. Let's enforce it. Don't have to snap. Offside. 44 of the defense was in the neutral zone at the snap. This is a five-yard penalty. It's still third down. And when they call purple, and if there's a defender that jumps in the neutral zone, the center will automatically snap it, which means the quarterback has to get the ball out immediately or it's going to result in a sack as Silvers now gives way to last week's starter, Cole McDonald, who's been in the game an awful lot this whole season on third and short situations because he's more of a run threat at the quarterback spot. One touchdown and one pick last week against St. Louis. Max Borgie gets a handoff. And he's got enough for the first down. And another third down conversion for this Houston team. First run of the game for the Roughnecks. Silver's back in. Hey, hey, Red. 
head F and jump. Go on, ready? Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Hey, On the sideline, Borgie with an over-the-shoulder grab. It's a pickup of 20. And they're going to try to go fast. And this is great recognition here, and really nice job, too, by Deontay Burnett, who gets the little bit of a pick or a rub, whatever we want to say right there, on the guy trying to cover Borgie, and he has a big play. Silvers takes it himself and is only able to gain a yard. Check. Reno check. Brandon Silvers ran a version of this offense at Troy. Kind of a hybrid run and shoot air raid. That one's complete again for four. First catch for Travell Harris out of Washington State. And a big hit delivered that time by number 15, Jordan Williams, who at the second level for San Antonio does an amazing job. One of the most productive defenders in the entire league all over the field. They can heat up the quarterback, too, with great speed. Well, up next, have already converted a pair of third downs. Play clock at two. Here comes the pressure. Silvers gets away. Side arms for a first down and more. Harris gets finally punched out inside the five. Another huge third down conversion. A really nice job here. Stepping up by Brandon Silvers. You see the wide rush around the right hand side. He steps up, keeps his eyes downfield. Scott uncovered. Harris uncovers, excuse me. He makes the accurate throw for nice run after catch as well. Just a great job of Silvers moving up in the pocket and continuing to keep his eyes downfield. San Antonio, one of the best quarterback pressure teams in the league. Heinz Ward wants to use the timeout here. He wants to challenge. Hands to the face. You want to talk? Yes. Hands to the face. Yes. By which, by which tackle? The left tackle or right tackle? Right tackle. 79. 79, right tackle. And you hear I got it. I got a good look. every coach has one go challenge in the XFL. You can challenge anything. You can challenge penalties. You can challenge no calls. Frank, he's call he's challenging hands to the face, right tackle 79, correct? San Antonio is challenging hands to the San Antonio is challenging you got it. hands to the face. The so I'm, gonna, I'm starting with my car. Again, there's a rip. There's a quick hand to the face. I don't see anything prolonged. To go to that end zone shot. James Moore is the right tackle. Mike Scott the rusher. End zone shot shows me pretty pretty much the his same thing. His left hand is on the, his head. He's yeah. looking at his left hand on the back of the helmet too. Hines is. Left hand on the back wall. His hands He's in the nice fouls. The right hand. I don't see anything prolonged. He doesn't pin the head back. Frank, after review, there's no foul for hands to the face. There's no prolonged action. There's no forcible blow, and he doesn't pin the head back. So the ruling on the field will stand. Will stand. Yeah. No mask. There's no breath. There's no foul for hands to the face by Houston. San Antonio has lost their ability to challenge for the remainder of the game, and they are charged their first time out. And it's rare that the coaches, this is by far the earliest I've seen a challenge used in the seven weeks and change already. As you can see on the right side, the hand is up close to the face mask and it can be engaged, but doesn't feel like it's prolonged. And you heard Dean explain exactly what boxes need to be checked for that hands to the face to be called. Didn't feel like there was enough there. And as a result, the play will stand. Hines has been red hot with his challenges all season. Much better than the average in the league. Borgie the running back, first and goal for Houston. 11th play of the opening drive. Borgie trying to find some space. It's taken down after a gain of a couple. Jack Kerner, the safety from Iowa, came in to make the stop. 
regular, regular. Strong left, nasty. H orbit, Bronco stare. Z clamps. Strong left, nasty. H orbit, Bronco stare. Z Strong left, clamps. nasty. H orbit. I'm really only focused on the word nasty. <laughs> that means it's a tighter alignment. So nasty, that X to the top, or technically the backside receiver, he's in a tight alignment. Orbit means the receiver's going around him. The throw. Caught! Touchdown, Houston! Deontay Burnett. Nasty leads to six. And now in the XFL, they can choose... What they want to do from a point after perspective, there is no kicking here. Good start. Good start indeed. Cashing in on a 12 play drive. Why on? Same Broncos. Oh, one ready. They are 0 for 7 going for 1 this season. You see the options available. Borgie trying to dance to the outside. And he gets submarine at the eight-yard line by Luke Barku. The opening drive. Nasty. The same family, I suppose, but <laughs> slightly different. Slightly different. <laughs> as different as a steak and a milkshake. <laughs> Austin Jones, who just signed this week, He'll handle the kicking duties for Houston. Fred Brown back to receive for San Antonio. Brown, full head of steam. Nice little duck. Takes it out to the 26. We have a flag on the play. On the near side. Who's the foul on? Kicking kick. Hey, get out there. Left speed. Left yeah, See if Coach Ward wants to tack it on. Hey, they got speed. He wants to re-kick. He wants to re-kick. All right, let's tee it up again. Legal motion. Multiple players on the kicking team leaving early. It's five-yard penalty will be assessed from the previous spot. We will kick again. Gonna give him a mulligan. <laughs> and of course, you cannot move if you're the kicking or the return team until the ball is caught. And understandable here that with an offense that has at times had their fair share of difficulties, San Antonio opting for the re kick because just a week ago, Fred Brown took one to the house, the first kick return ever recorded in the XFL. So Brown sneaking up towards his 10 yard line. This will be a short one. Takes it at about the 18. Couldn't find the first hole. And gets bounced backwards. Brandon Silver has led Houston to an opening score. Here he is with Chris Budden. Well, you miss a, a week, you get right back into rhythm. What was working on that drive? Yeah, a couple, you know, passes I got to complete. Uh, but, you know, it's good to be back out there with the guys. How you feeling after the injury? I feel good. You know, I felt good all week. Uh, I told Coach Wade I was good to go, and, you know, he gave me the thumbs up. So, you know, I'm out here trying to sling it around a little bit. Awesome. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Back from a grade two tricep strain. Meanwhile, four different quarterbacks have started this season for San Antonio through seven games. It's back to Jack Cohn, a quarterback. Former Wisconsin and Notre Dame stand out, and his first pass is complete as he works it in to Landon Akers. So here's the background for Jack Cohn. Made his mark in the Midwest, helped Wisconsin the Big Ten championship game, and they ended the season in the Rose Bowl in 2019 before transferring to Notre Dame, and he came out slinging. And set a Notre Dame record in the Fiesta Bowl for passing yards. Eventually signed with the Colts as an undrafted free agent. Jaquez Patrick with his first carry. Jack Cohn is a very cerebral player. Great understanding of the offense, great understanding of down and distance and situational football. Does not have a huge arm, but is accurate when his feet are set. The problem with San Antonio this year 
Regardless of who's been at quarterback, the protection has been leaky. So he's going to have to make quick decisions today, get the ball out of his hands against a team that's the best in the XFL rushing the quarterback. On third and short, Patrick again. That's a first down. And he finished by lowering his shoulder to pick up eight. Only 20 yards last week for Patrick in the loss to Las Vegas. A nice cut back there from Patrick, a guy that was the understudy at Florida State for a very well, long there, time. As you run. can see, Wade Phillips seeing that backside collapse and give up that third down conversion. Cone working it to Patrick, able to thread the needle for a first down. Coming out of Florida State, some big moment experience for Patrick. Absolutely, and he was really the change of pace back there at Florida State. Didn't get as many opportunities because Dalvin Cook was the guy in front of him. Doesn't mean he didn't have talent. He's really good. Straight line, he's 240 pounds. He can get downhill. He's proving, though, in the XFL, he can be a factor in the passing game as well. Cone steps up, lets it go deep. And a collision, but no flag incomplete. Trying to work it downfield to TJ Vasher, who's been one of their key weapons over an inconsistent offensive season. And Vasher has great length. Problem with him is whoever the quarterback's been, and we've referenced it, there have been plenty. They haven't really given him an opportunity to use his length. He's six foot six, and there have been way too many long foul balls. And another one right there, Vegas, Vegas. even though Cohn had to get rid of it Forget because him. pressure was coming off the left hand side. Been a busy quarterback room for San Antonio. Cohn started the season. Juwan Pass started last week against Las Vegas. In between, there was Kurt Bankert and Reed Sinnott. Bankert. Suffered three fractured ribs last week. Was able to finish the game, but they weren't positive that he'd be able to go and be effective this week. And they added Paxton Lynch this week too, former first rounder, most recently having played with the Orlando Guardians. So quarterback has been very up and down for San Antonio. Shift in the pocket, and that's complete for a first down down to the 20 yard line. Landon Akers. Had a big game last week against Vegas with 75 yards on six grabs. A nice job here by Cohn sliding in the pocket, buying just a little bit more time to allow Akers to run the over route. He squeezes it in between two defenders and picks up another big play. It's been a really nice start for San Antonio offensively. Eighth play of the opening drive, Patrick again. They've shuffled offensive coordinators. Jimmy Johnson is the play caller. Let's go nickel 13. Nickel 13. Somebody get Nick. Nickel 13. Left hash. Let's go toy right. F back. Bad Twix. F gone. Hey, bad Twix. F gone. Bad Twix. F gone. Las Vegas. Ready. I've never had a bad Twix. <laughs> well, they've gone Twix in the past. It's been a little bit of a screen, so let's see if they run that screen to the left. There you go. Now you should have a screen to the left. Should be good against pressure. Patrick sneaks out. Good hands. Got through the first. Got through the second. Jaquez Patrick. Touchdown, San Antonio. Jack Cohn back in action, didn't play the last two games, and Patrick doing the heavy lifting on this finish. Really close. There is there looking at it. Great call. Pressure off the left hand side. AJ Hendy applying that pressure and just had to screen right into the face of that pressure as Dean Blandino will take a look. To make sure that so Patrick we've got crossed the plane. Play. Two angles together. At the half yard line. It will be first down and goal. As you can see the Dean's already done with it. He's very quick. quick right there. As you can see where the ball is, where the foot is out. 
And they stitch those two looks together. As Dean makes a quick adjustment, and it'll be first and goal for San Antonio. But don't take this for granted. They had four opportunities against these roughnecks a few weeks back, first and goal. And they were stopped, which ultimately led to them losing the game. John Hillman in at running back. Hillman hit as soon as he got it. All right, so you referenced the goal line stop by Houston a few weeks ago. Does that change the way Jimmy Johnson thinks about this, or at least Heinz Ward think we can't get stopped at the two again? Absolutely, I'd put, and they're going to. Jawan Pass now coming into the game at quarterback as Jack Cohn is coming off. He gives you more of a mobile option, so especially on the left hash, I would roll the quarterback to the right. Meaning I can give you a run pass option, get quarterback run game involved in this part of the field so you can pick up that extra blocker with the running back out in front. Pass keeps it, and he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. It's a Houston team which leads the league in sacks, fourth and tackles for loss. It's just extremely well played by Houston on the left-hand side. Really nicely done there by Rivers, number 47, who really blew up that pulling guard. Cone back in a quarterback. Got to assume this is going to be a throw, which I would love to have seen on second down, but they're going to have to call timeout either way. The play clock's low. You think they're playing man in that situation? It's a must-win game for San Antonio. Heinz Ward using a timeout here with the play clock. We either got late. We got that or we got Satan Goat. Which one do you think? Satan Goat or? Huh? Let's go nickel. And you wonder here, he's probably telling us OC, four down territory. Trips right beta. Let's go 74, Satan Goat. Trips right beta, 74, Satan Goat. Critical play here. You hear Satan go. It makes me think sit and go, perhaps, by number 88, Alizé Mack. Let's see if they go with a double move at the tight end who's lined up at number three on the bottom. A couple of domers, Cone and Mack. Pressure, and Cone goes down! Devontae Beckett was the first one in there, and William likely delivered the knockout blow. 24th sack of the season for the Roughnecks. And this is just overload, cover zero, bring the house blitz. The ball has to come out immediately. And when you were working a double move, which has looked like that's what they had on, you just don't have time to allow that route to develop. A great call defensively by Brian Stewart, the DC. They'll settle for the three. John Parker, Romo knocks it through from 26 yards. And what was a promising drive gets stuck inside the five yard line. Well, we got the quick out up there. We gotta throw it. Kick it. Stopping San Antonio at first and goal at the one half yard line. Lost yards on all three plays. Settled for a field goal. Just all too familiar for San Antonio as their red zone woes continue, especially against their division rivals, the Houston Roughnecks. John Parker Romo puts it in the air. Off a hop. Dejon Lee looking for the sideline. And popped out of bounds. Let's get you to Chris Budden. I'm going to get defensive coordinator Brian Stewart after that big stop after he's done talking with his guys. Coach, take me down to that third down stop in the uh, in the play call up against him. Well, we're just trying to stop him. I thought we thought it was a touchdown at first, and then they told us that it was going to be under one. So then now we're just going to have to pressure him. So that's what we did. We just, just pressured him. You've been so complimentary of those guys up front. What do they give you? Oh shoot, they do. They just they just play. You know what I mean? I don't know how, how to explain it the other way. They do a good job just playing their blocks and doing what they can do. I appreciate it. Right, thank you. 
Brian Sue for two years was defensive coordinator of the Cowboys under Wade Phillips. And it's just full edge pressure. You have one on ones and if you're in an empty situation like San Antonio was you want that you want that empty pressure because you know there's not going to be any overhang in the secondary. Receiving team moving prior to their eligibility to move some this five yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. The second time we've seen that first penalty and Houston. here in the first quarter. You would invite that pressure normally. You would move your entire offensive line to the right side and the unblocked guy would be coming from the left. So as a quarterback, you can move to your right and deliver the ball accurately somewhere out in the flat to the right or to the back corner to the right. But that time they didn't get the protection adjustment and it led to a big third down stop and the forced field goal. Brandon Silver six of nine through the air Get a little bit better as he slings it out to Michael Bandy who just picked up last week by Houston week eight in the X wraps up tonight over on ESPN two. This is a monster game. Seattle is in D.C. to take on the defenders coverage begins at seven Eastern and is also available on ESPN plus D.C. can clinch a playoff berth with a win. Meanwhile Seattle's riding a five game win streak Part of that game is in Seattle. And the total in that game in the upper 40s. So expecting a lot of points there between those two explosive offenses. Silvers goes down the sideline and incomplete. And what an opportunity for Tenny Adewuse. As you can see, they are dropping that corner inside. Eyes are completely in the backfield the entire time. Silvers throws right exactly where Adewusi wanted it. And Hines Ooh. Ward, the former oh, all pro wide receiver, saying that's why you play defense right there. You got to reel that thing in on the sideline. Third down, six for Houston. To the slant, first down and more, and plenty of running room for Justin Smith, who takes it all the way to midfield. 21 yard gain you mentioned that San Antonio is playing a lot of man coverage about 90 percent so far. Yeah I would say probably right at that 90 percent mark right there. You get such a great route against man coverage. It's a simple slant. You're running away. You get a receiver with quick action. You get immediate separation. You hit him in stride on time and he's got room to run after the fact. Does Brandon Silvers want to see a lot of man coverage all day long. Strength of Houston's entire team are their wide receivers, even in the absence of John Trey Kirkland, who was by far their best weapon. Their wide receivers are deep, and this style of offense is built to destroy man coverage. There's a lot of reads, there's a lot of things that you can throw at okay. them, and their receivers are also very effective coming out of the backfield at the running back spot, too. So I think San Antonio needs to get off man sooner than later. Second and ten. For Houston. And they'll put it on the ground. Uh, Cole's down there with the other Scott. Delonte, how do you grade Mike's dance moves first? Uh, my brother, he a dancer, man. I get a ten out of ten. Can you take us through this play like what, when you when you're watching your brother out there? Tell us what you see. Uh, I see him sitting there setting the edge. Uh, when they try to bring the ball to us. Just take us through right here. Watch the play and take right. us through. All right. Third down. Yeah, get ready for a great rush. What's he thinking rush right now? Uh, probably a speed rip. We third and short. Yeah, probably a speed rip or a dip. Oh, you, you drop him. And now Silver's oh, trying yes, to sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, full group effort, baby. Drop a D-line out here, baby. Get Sean down with the sack, man. Check that boy out. Spin the Ruski. Yes, sir. 55, hit that boy with a spin move. Let's hit him. There's a spin move he was talking about by Deshaun Downey. He played his college ball at UMass and knocked the helmet right off of Brandon Silvers on third down. Tell me about that spin move. Man, we've been working all week, man. That's on the D, whole D line. We've just been working. That's it. You set it up earlier in the game? Uh, Man, we've just been studying all, all game. They've been oversetting all, all season, so we're just taking advantage of what they're giving us. Thank you. No problem. That's great film work, and it results in a pressure that gets the ball back after a 38-yard punt. I'm pretty impressed right there with Mike Scott. I think he told us what every single defensive lineman did 
on that specific play. He said, oh, he's dropping. Oh, spin move. Like, he knew every single thing without seeing a replay or anything. Cole, how did he see all four rushers I'll just, I'll at the exact this, same time? If you talk as much trash as he does in-game from the sideline, you have to pay attention because he does not stop <laughs> talking the entire time. Every time he's off from the sideline, he's running his mouth the entire time. Love that. Delonte and Mike, brothers from Texas, played at SMU and Oklahoma State, respectively. Jack Cohn on the move. And a little bit of room after the catch for Deion Yelder. It's a pickup of six. 28 NFL games under Yelder's belt. Originally signed with the Saints as an undrafted free agent in 2018 out of Western Kentucky. And these two tight ends for San Antonio are weapons. Yelder, big, physical at the end of the line of scrimmage. Really your more traditional tight end. And then you have Alizé Mack, the former Notre Dame fighting Irish tight end who is really athletic and a real factor in the red zone. Cone pressured and dropped. Man, it got there in a hurry. C.J. Brewer got the keys to the sack, and it's a loss of seven. Just miscommunication here on the right-hand side. Yelder blocks out, and the right tackle doesn't get out fast enough. So they just weren't on the same page on a quick little token play action in the backfield. And there's absolutely nothing Jack Cohn can do under that type of pressure. Now right tackle Derek Kelly back in action after missing some time. The San Antonio offensive line has been a revolving door. Now Kelly moved early. Neutral zone infraction. 33 the defense. It's a five yard penalty. Still third down. Ryan Stewart and Wade Phillips both saw something different. Mentioned San Antonio offensive line. Dwayne Wallace getting his first start. He came over from D.C., been on the roster for two weeks. And Mike Brown, his first start of the season as well. He's only been on the roster for a week and a half. Mm. Hey, Wallace, 62 at left tackle. San Antonio caught a break. The neutral zone flag, third and six. Cone going back to his right. And that's Vasher. And it's a flag, but a first down catch. Oh, that's a good team. Holding for 16 of the defense. This penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. It's Raleigh Tejada who got flagged. Unbelievable catch here by Vasher. Cohn doesn't like anything play side, works all the way back side. The coverage is really tight as a result of that hole, but look at the wingspan of Vasher. Six foot six, being able to stretch out and get it. And now a huge gashing run by Jaquez Patrick. Picks up 13. And San Antonio will move the chain again. Bad gazelle, it means the run is to the left, but when you call an alert, you can check it and move it to the right. Now, the run is going to go to the right-hand side. What does he see to make him shift it from left to right? It's dependent on a couple of rules that you would install throughout the course of the week. Sometimes you run to the tightest shade meaning the guy that is closest to the center. Some other times you run away from rotation. So if a safety, for instance, is spun down to the left, you would run away from rotation, so you would run it back to the right. Just depends on what your rules are on a week-to-week -week basis. It's second and eight, multiple flags in the air. And Patrick stumbles his way forward for a pickup of three. UF Cole. Yes. 98. Yep. We'll go 98. Yep. And we're going to go enforce it. Enforce That's C.J. Brewer. Uh, we had the I sack hear. earlier this drive. Offside. Number 98 of the defense in the neutral zone of the snap. It's a five-yard penalty still. Second down. 
Meanwhile Patrick comes off the field had a little bit of a limp after that last run. That's significant too. They're already without Kalen Bellage, who injured his Achilles a couple weeks ago. Him and Patrick were the one two punch. And then in his injury Patrick really became the go to guy. So now it could be up to John Hilleman and Kevin Marks who was recently acquired. Uh, play action. Cone gets out of the pocket and is able to scramble for the first down. Jack Heflin got a hand on him but couldn't bring him down before the marker. A good job of Cone stepping up in the pocket, recognizing the coverage good. Go get what you can. Don't hold on to it forever. Understanding that that Houston rush, you could tell all week long, Jimmy Johnson, the offensive coordinator for San Antonio, they've been preaching, hey, this rush, this pass rush, they lead the XFL in sacks. Yeah. You have to get the ball out, and when you escape, you escape vertical. That's what Cone did there. He didn't hold it too long and got some positive yards out of it. Cone has already thrown for more yards in this game than the previous matchup with Houston, and a denial on the perimeter by Ajene Harris. Stay nickel. Let's go 7 five. 269 Dragon Card. Come on now, let's get a completion. 7 fact 269 Dragon Card. Let's go. Second and 10. Vegas, we go. He should have a slant down here to the bottom. Could have an opportunity. There it, there it is. is. And it's good for a first down and a shuffle for more. Fred Brown out of Mississippi State picks up 19. Nice job here, recognizing where that hole in the zone is going to be. Gets the ball out quickly and picks up another nice gain with the completion. Cone 7 of 10 for 90 yards. Vegas, Vegas. In the first matchup, he went 8 for 20. For only 64 yards of the touchdown and a pick. Patrick back in the game. He looks healthy. And he's got another San Antonio first down on a 13-yard game. Really nice rhythm so far from San Antonio offensively. Mixing run pass. Jack Cohn's getting the ball out of his hand quickly. He's anticipating throws. And when given the opportunity to run the ball on early downs, 65. 65. Patrick's really finishing his run, averaging over six a carry. Already in the first quarter and a half. The 11th play of this drive. Cone got tripped up and gets taken down. Jack Heflin with the sack. Glenn Logan of LSU was in there as well. And Logan is still down. Well, Jimmy Johnson have a little bit more time to think about the next play call. Logan, a four-year starter, part of that incredible national championship team in 2019 at LSU under Ed Orgeron. And in the time, he got out of college, signed a deal as uh, next in line WWE deal. 6'3", 300. You want to see him coming off the top row? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm Put it this way, I'm just, I think, bet the WWE guys are glad he's still playing football. <laughs> that's that's right. probably a safe Keep the assumption. pads on. Yes. Got the quick out up there. We got to throw it. Bash. You had him on the fade. Tell him now, if they, if they all out blitz, throw the fade. He's got he's got to, he's got to get the ball out of his hand. Yeah, when they get down in the, in the red, you got to anticipate zero. Yeah, just when they go zero, just give them, give, give them heat because he's going to play hard inside on that. So if they blitz, just throw it up, throw it up to, to Bash. Two things we learned there. All out pressure, ball's got to come out quick, right? We understand that. The second thing, there has never been a receiver that's ever been covered ever. So when <laughs> Heinz Ward asked TJ Vasher if he had him on the fade, that wasn't a real question. That was a rhetorical question. He knew the answer before it even needed to be said. Second and 13 now. Second possession for San Antonio and knocked away. Practically 
taken out of the hands of Deion Yelder by Caleb Bryce. And right, he noted basketball powerhouse Florida Atlantic. And right here too, if you're Jack Cohen, you got to be thinking pressure again because why? You're right on field goal range. It's third and 13. It's obvious passing situation. They want to knock you out of field goal range, and the only way to do that is by bringing the heat. So you got to be thinking, hey, ball's got to come out quickly here because a sack might eliminate the chance to get three. Cohen getting rid of it. And Alizé Mack picks up a few. And they'll try for a field goal from John Parker Romo, who's already hit from 26. And they brought the heat again, too, and they had it nice and protected with a nice seven-man protection. He finds an outlet to make this field goal three yards easier. 42-yard attempt. Indoors. Off the turf. And good. We are tied at six, San Antonio. Six the hard way. Houston missed on its point after, and Jack Cohn to the tablet. Try to get a little bit more efficient. We're tied up. That family. I actually talked to Julian Cohn Sr. about him before the game. Said he's got a lot of meetings lined up here over the next week, week and a half. And I said, one thing I really appreciate about your son's game playing corner, I don't watch corners a ton. I said, the physicality. He loves to tackle, and he said that was the main thing that those two talked about during his college career, that once you go to that next level, that is not going to be optional, especially if you go to a franchise like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Corners are going to be alone. They're going to be in space, and that physicality cannot be something that you decide to do every now and then. It's got to be there on every play. Joey Porter Jr.'s got it. So does he want him to go to the Steelers? I mean, what, is he, what does he want? I mean, I, I really want – you're like that much of a diehard, so ingrained in the Pittsburgh Steeler culture. I mean, if he goes, what if he goes to Cincinnati? How weird will that be? <laughs> well, he's meeting with the Ravens this week. Here's a swing out to Borgie. And he gets bottled up. The funny thing is, eight. I feel like Joey Porter would have been a great Raven. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the Steelers yeah, yeah. and Ravens are kind of cut from the same cloth. Like, physical, you know, want to just absolutely maul you at the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's who they are. So, if he goes to the Ravens, that would make a lot of sense. But that would make for an interesting dynamic two weeks a year when the Ravens and Steelers are playing each other. I think it'd make more sense to go to the Steelers as a Steelers fan who hasn't drafted a decent corner in about two decades. Wow. <laughs> How do you really feel? On uh, second and two, Cedric Bird can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Jack Kerner coming up to make a big stop. He was signed by the Saints as a free agent coming out of Iowa. Second team all Big Ten. You hear purple again. That's when they'll go up, take a picture, see what they're in defensively, and then get an optimal call. Once again, it's looking like man coverage here. So you hear Bucks, that'll be a handoff. And I like it a lot. There's only two guys on the left hand side. Borgie has space. And he picks up the first down. It turns into a simple math equation, huh? GMAC, A.J. Smith was telling us about that on the field before the game. He said, I feel like I can get that defensive front seven misaligned on a regular basis. He did it the last time those two teams met and obviously found a way to steal yards again right there. And right there, you have two defenders on the left side of the center. You also have leverage with the center against the defensive tackle. You pull a guy around, and next thing you know, football is all about numbers and leverage. That time, numbers were very much in Houston's favor. Silvers with a hitch. Here's the goal. Open, but incomplete. Deontay Barnett, intended receiver. Okay, here we go. Uh, go, go, Charger. 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 Trips right up. X, uh, X Pac. F ship X Pac. Blue, blue, blue. Trips right up. Blue. We saw AJ Smith's Manila folder last week had. Pickleball champion written on the back of it. He said that was a message to my nephews in Utah who think they can beat me at pickleball. Just a little reminder. On second and ten, a bullet incomplete and a flag down. Trying to get it to Justin Smith. He got taken down before he got to the middle of the field. Okay, right there. I see it. 
I'm on the all 22. Boom. Where's my flag? Defense 28. Your flag good. Jack like Kerner in coverage. Pass interference. 28 at the defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. The fans don't like it, obviously, but you can see the de defender and the wide receiver making contact. Did feel a little incidental, but either way, that'll be a good call. Keep an eye here. You have this underneath and this out the gate. They already hit it for one big play early. If they're in man coverage again, could be another big hitter. Looking for him. And a little bit behind. Here we go. Give me this. Give me this. Trio right. Reno check. Trio right. Reno check. Just yeah, get ready for red fence. Let's run red fence. Red fence. Hey, red. And Deion Fitz, you are in the out here. Red fence works to go. Yeah. Number one, Deontay Burnett. Run like hell. Bottom of the formation. Keep an eye on that. Yeah. Out the gate, possibly. The safety spins down. On a dead sprint, but it's a sidearm pass underneath the coverage and almost picked. Ryan Lewis had good coverage. It seemed like maybe the pressure had Silver's backpedaling. It definitely was. He was feeling it. If you throw it off your back foot, especially late in the flats, it's a possibility that defender could undercut it. Fortunate there that that ball wasn't intercepted. Third and long, defenders licking the chops cold. Delonte, tell us what you're seeing again here. Yes, sir. Tell us what you're seeing. All right, cool. We see here his motion. It's obviously going to be a pass. It's, uh, oh, yeah, Michael, let's go. Uh, damn. Brother just missed him, and it was delivered for a first down on a gain of 11 to Michael Bandy. Another good job there by Silver stepping up. You feel that edge pressure coming around the right-hand side, and a good job, too, keeping his eyes downfield as Bandy uncovers. He delivers a strike for that third and long conversion. Bandy, two Go. years with the Chargers coming out of University of San Diego. Two and we hit the two-minute warning. We've got a tie game here in the first half of a game of postseason implications. <laughs> That's going to be a heck of a game. I can't wait to watch it. And Ben DiNucci, the quarterback for Seattle, can he keep a clean sheet? Because he's a walking turnover. Man, if he keeps a clean sheet, they're going to be tough to beat. Silvers lets it go, and he finds Yante Burnett, who's now going across the grain. Burnett, the 54-yard run from sideline to sideline to pick up five yards. Wow. I mean, Brandon Silvers just got absolutely destroyed. Watch off the right-hand side. Gets beat inside, and he gets high load in the backfield. Let's take a listen. It was Drew Beasley high, Delante Scott low. Man, that's a big shot. They'll ask him to throw following it. To the wheel route, try to go back shoulder, incomplete to Borgie. It doesn't seem like much, though. I mean, those hits, they probably always look worse than they actually feel. I'll say that. Okay. But the message that's sent to your guys if you pop right back up, goes a really long way. Now that right tackle, I want to kick him as hard as I possibly can right in the behind. But he's hurt. he feels worse about the hit than I do. So it's great to see the quarterback get right back up. That sends the right message. There's six of seven on third down today. Shot to the end zone and it's knocked away by Barku. Luke Barku got a challenge from his head coach, Heinz Ward, last week. And Heinz Ward fired up about a flag that didn't come.
I'm so bark you. You start winning some of these matchups. You're going to the NFL. Fantastic recovery. That's a great job of tracking the football. I think Hines probably wanted some type of OPI because you saw Barku get pushed outside initially off the release. But a great recovery nonetheless. So a 41 yard field goal attempt coming from Houston and their brand new kicker Austin Jones. Austin Jones was signed when Hunter DuPlessis went down with an injury early this week. What a wild ride it's been for him. Jones originally was a starting kicker at Temple and in a game against Memphis he tore his ACL making a tackle on a kickoff return. Then he lost his starting job, got his degree from Temple, transferred to play for Nick Saban at Alabama, was a starting kicker there for only three games. Missed a field goal, then an extra point. Did get back on the field for the Crimson Tide. And now his first field goal attempt in the XFL. From 41 yards in the lead. And the Roughnecks are back in front. They led this game 6 0 before a pair of San Antonio field goals tied it up. Perfect snap, matches laces. Nice high arcing kick right through the middle. And Houston takes the lead by three. So we got 15 total points in this game. The over under is 38 and a half. All right, I'm telling you, I'm about, to, I'm about to blast y'all. If y'all don't sit there and make the right call, make the call. You saw I was holding. You saw I was holding. He was about to call it. No, I'm about no to blast doubt. All I'm about to blast all y'all, man. Y'all killing us. Y'all killing us. Joy, get back, get back. Get back, get back, get back. Hans Ward certainly has a sense of urgency. I'll tell you what, I, I can probably take Heinz's wrath but if Joey Porter starts going after the officials that might change <laughs> some of my decisions he, he has been on him for about two straight series too I, I've been standing right behind him and I know I know Heinz are going there and and he's not afraid of, of a little toughness physical stuff as well but Porter might scare me here's Fred Brown kickoff return for a score in his back pocket and a flag coming on the return. 56 seconds to play in the half. I was going to mention low scoring first half which is the norm for San Antonio. They typically come Booby under the total. During the return. But we had some very long 31. drives and we'll have limited possessions in this game. And just not very During effective the in the red Holden. zone either. For 31 of the return team. It's a 10 yard penalty on the spot of the foul. First down, San Antonio. I mean, this thing will stay under all day long if they keep settling for field goals. And with San Antonio's challenges inside the red zone, hey, Lake. it's Lake been a big Lake. reason why they Lake. haven't really put this whole thing together in the first eight weeks of the year. Vegas, we go. Fighting. San Antonio started four different quarterbacks. Cone back is the starter now. Coming back from injury, and he'll flick it out of bounds. Past the line of scrimmage. Cone 8 of 12 for 93 yards in this first half. And a good decision there. If they do want to go two minute operation, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend with this starting field position. You throw it away to preserve the time, but knowing that Houston has two timeouts at their disposal, that might be one where I would have told the quarterback to slide, stay in bounds, and take this thing into half down three. A little bit low and incomplete to Landon Acres. And now Houston, if they can get off the field here, and you got to think they have at least one timeout at their disposal depending on what San Antonio decides to do offensively and they're going to have a great field position. So there you go. You hear Wade Phillips telling them immediately what his plans are before the ball is even snapped. Line has dropped to Houston. 
give him four and a half now and that goes for a first down to Fred Brown. Clock will stop after the first down conversion. Rules that resemble college, but there is a flag down in the backfield. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. The defense number 17. This 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. As DeAndre Johnson got flagged for roughing the passer. It was a, I didn't think that this was necessarily rough in the passer. I mean, he's engaged, does kind of go a little high. You make contact with the quarterback's head, you're going to make that happen, but I don't know. Finally, finally. I say, I think, no, that one, I'm not sure it's a makeup call, but not the most egregious rough in the passer I've seen. Another flag down. And they go over the top to Alizé Mack. Notre Dame to Notre Dame, going to Mack. Pickup of seven. Offside defense, number 45, lining up neutral zone. They want Second to take neutral the penalty, zone infraction. So it'll still be first down. John Daka, guilty party this time. Offside, number 45 of the defense was in the neutral zone at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty. It'll still be first down. Cole, how does that happen? How do guys that close to the football line up? in the neutral zone well a couple things one you're always trying to push the limit you always want to try to get as close as humanly possible and a lot of times when you look down you lean a little bit further out but there are certain plays the center can do with the football where he kind of inches it a little bit forward when he addresses it and maybe potentially gets you into that neutral zone you just got to know where the ball is and make sure you're fine can't imagine a center would engage in gamesmanship yeah, like that about two inches he just gained right there yeah that's how McElroy spots his ball on the green move the corner up a little bit <laughs> Pressure on Cone. And incomplete. 28 seconds left. Easter greetings exchanged, and it results in a flag. We have intentional ground. He's going to go 10 yards. You hear a moment ago. Intentional grounding. Did he get outside the tackle box? That's the question. And we've got the I ball think he did, and I believe the ball got past the line of scrimmage, so it should not be intentional grounding. Yep. Yep. After good. reviewing the play, the ball did make it to the line of scrimmage, therefore there is no foul for intentional grounding. I love it's the fact that Dean pass. Landino is on top of all of this stuff, and even before we show him on camera, he's already cleaned it up. I, I it does love not that. take long. No, it happens very quickly, and it's just an extra set of eyes that have access to camera angles that you can't see in real time so the transparency as far as the officiating in this league is second to none I wish it would be adopted at all levels of football uh, might be a little much for middle school second five <laughs> cone over the middle that is a Mac again and he's gonna give him a third and one Tavante Beckett with the stop and they'll use the timeout as a kid from Texas, I can assure you middle school yes. football is a very big deal. We might need to put in a central fair. command center from the Dallas Fort Worth area, and we take our middle school and high school football very seriously here, Tom. Third and one, what's a good play call for San Antonio with 18 seconds left? I just okay my pinky if I popped it back in. Oh, that's good. Come again? <laughs> Which hand? What are we doing? He pointed to his throwing hand. Yeah, well, doesn't look great. Hey, that's uh, that's pretty tough. Good ape on Omaha, ready. Good ape, so a little handoff to the right hand side, getting the first down, and then I would usually call two plays here. Get the first down, then you're immediately up to the line of scrimmage, or you can clock it. So right here, you would get up and clock it immediately. A helmet came off of the Roughnecks. He's got to hurry back. That's Charles Wiley. Wiley crawling around and wasn't ready to go with the helmet off. He was trying to go down. I mean, that was a little chaotic. He was trying to sit down and, and get relief, but he decided to just call timeout, it looks like. On that side of the ball. There you go. Are you kidding me? Who called timeout? 
So you can see the helmet on the left side right there. Coming off. After he beats his offensive lineman inside. But what a bailout for San Antonio. It's a huge bailout. Ramos are out of timeouts. But they would have clocked it right there anyways and maybe wasted a second at most. But like you said, getting other play calls in, a chance to collect their breath. Cohen over the middle, intercepted! William likely had it thrown right to him. I don't know if that's a read, Greg, or it's a lack of execution for a guy who just had his pinky dislocated. That's just not on the same page. The second this ball leaves Jack Cohn's hand, you actually hear him say, oh, no, meaning the receiver, the intended wide receiver, Alizé Mack, starts to work out. Cohn thinks he's going to sit it right there at that spot. For athletic, man. Yeah, go check that out. For sure, for sure. And you can see right here, watch Alizé Mack. He twists to the outside and works away. Cone's actually correct. Let's listen to Cone on the play as the ball's released. Fighty! Fight time! Oh, no, no, no! And Cone is correct. It's zone defense. They're just dropping straight back. You wouldn't break away unless it's man. So his Stillers guy makes the mistake. Going deep, and he's intercepted. Jack Kerner with the takeaway. Half comes to an end, but they're still on the field, and Kerner will get dropped from behind. Chaos at the end of the half. Trading picks, and Kerner is banged up and holding his right knee. Well, Silvers was going to take a shot. No worse for wear on the Houston side, but real concern with Kerner of San Antonio. Just a greedy decision here from Silvers. Can't get enough on it. Kerner's over the top, and he makes the play and ends the half in exciting fashion up until the end when he gets hit low, and it looks like that right leg gets buckled underneath him. Just hope that young man's okay. You can see what Jack Kerner means to this defense. The majority of the starters and reserves are out there to check on him right away. Some still singing around, just trying to make sure, check on him, make sure everything's good. Just hoping the best for him. Just trying to give your team a chance as even a member of the Houston Roughnecks, Jack Heflin, is out there wishing him his very best. Heflin and Kerner teammates at the University of Iowa. <laughs> Kerner will leave under his own power. Oh, that's good to see. His interception leading to some late half drama. And unfortunately for them, most of their drives have ended as a result of a fairly catastrophic mistake. Including the last one, which ended on an interception from Jack Cohn on a miscommunication with his tight end, Alizé Mack. Red Brown on the return, stood up at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Progressive. Roughnecks, as expected, getting it done through the air. About even a time of possession. And each team turned it over once. I think there is an opportunity for Houston to lean a little bit more on the run game. Now, Brandon Silvers is not the same run threat as Cole Rio. McDonald. So he's probably not going to be a huge factor in this game, given the man defense that they're playing. But they got to be a little bit more balanced. Patrick had that handoff on his hip. Able to get going and secure the football again at two on first down. Yeah, I mean, this was a kind of a strange exchange right there. Probably thinking that Jack Cohn is going to pull that ball on the zone read. But Patrick hangs on to it just long enough to grab it on the hip. Fortunate that that thing didn't fall to the ground. Cohn led Wisconsin to the Rose Bowl, Notre Dame to the Fiesta Bowl, and they run it again to set up third and six. 
Notre Dame record 366 yards and four touchdowns in his first game with the Irish. Then a Fiesta Bowl record 509 yards and five touchdowns. And Patrick back. They're down six, looking for Patrick, and it's batted up and intercepted. Big guy run and Trevor Mason, and it gets cut down inside the ten. Ah, oh, we're that close to a fat guy touchdown. 315 pound rumble and 6-5 to get his paw on it. And a great job initially seeing that ball is going to come out really quickly. He stops his rush, tries to drop out underneath it, tips it up quick, to himself quick, and makes a play. Quick! 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 Got it! Go! 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 A rough next team, which is undefeated against the division. And trying to snap a three-game losing streak after a 4-0 start to the season. Cole McDonald now in a quarterback. Max Borgie. Gains two. Thir uh, second and goal coming. Just such a big play. There is. They're still celebrating on the sideline, but get the big fella some oxygen, man. He's got to be gassed after rumbling and stumbling near pay dirt there on the opening drive of the second half. Sometimes you hear about a player holding the ball like a loaf of bread. He was holding it like a can of soup. <laughs> the hands are so big. Now second and goal. Shot. Touchdown. Five yard strike to Garrett Owens. Set up by the pick. <laughs> the punt provoker has made the trip to San Antonio and his team with the lead. They're going to go for one. And look for a 10 point advantage. They're 0 for 8 on one point conversions this year. Borgie. Gets it in. There is a flag. Number 10. He was on the line of scrimmage and went in motion. A Justin Smith flag. Illegal motion. Offense number 10. On the line of scrimmage went in motion. It's a five yard penalty. The try will be from the seventh. They'll back it up. This is still only worth one. Here we go. Trips right. Brown. Brown. No one ready. Travon Mason set it all up with the pick. Second chance at one. Safety blitz to the end zone and incomplete. So the six came easy thanks to the short field. It's a two play seven yard drive as Owens out of Duquesne takes it in. But it was Trevon Mason who set it up. He's with Chris. Yeah, Mason glad it took a little bit to get to this interview. We're breathing real hard. How are we feeling right now? On top. <laughs> My hip hurt. I thought I was going to hurt the quarterback. Uh, I got to get a redo on that one. Take me through what you saw on that pick. Man, I ain't going to lie. I seen the lineman wasn't really blocking me. And I, I sniffed it out, smell a rat. Screen. I seen him throw it. I tipped it. But I didn't think I was going to catch it. But it came back to my house. Oh, baby, let's get it. <laughs> then I tried to score, and then it was just. How badly did you want to score, and how'd they catch you? I don't know how that quarterback caught me, but he caught me, though. I don't know. I need to get back in the lab for real, because that was that was that was bad. No way a quarterback should have called me. 
You're going to hear about that tomorrow. By the way, I've been told many times by coaches and players, please do not interview him. You're going to have a big head after this moment? Nah. Very humble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Very humble. They just say that because I, I be talking crazy. I say what's on my mind. Yeah. That's all it is. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Humble just like you two guys up there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Although we can jump over a phone book. He said he was going to hurdle the quarterback. He, they didn't get off the ground. Solid return for Fred Brown. He said, I thought I was going to hurdle the quarterback. But you got to have the excuses built in. He said, oh, man, I'm, my hip hurts. Like I, I like <laughs> it because you know tomorrow when they put this tape on <laughs> because of the result, you can absolutely crush him. Like, you would never crush your boy after he makes a bad play. But after he makes a great play, sure. you can wear him out, especially if you get hawked by a quarterback from behind. You said he snipped it out. You could hear his head coach yelling, quick, quick, quick. Even before the pass, Jaquez Patrick carrying the load, pickup of seven. It was a great play, great recognition. And now it's going to be important for San Antonio to kind of bounce back. Right. So far, right. Right. they've been their right. own worst enemy so far. Good. And to get back to trying to establish the line of scrimmage, mix some run pass, we get go. their quarterback re-engaged. Interceptions on consecutive possessions for Jack Cohn in San Antonio. They went field goal, field goal, pick, pick on their four possessions to this point. Let's go, nickel, nickel, nickel. Let's go six pack, six pack. Let's go 268 dragon card. 268, 268 on Vegas, right? Dragon card. Yeah. Third down three. Vegas. There are five of eight on third downs today. Should have an opportunity for the slant right here and a flat. They hit it earlier for a big first down. Pressure from the edge. Cone incomplete. He had Fred Brown. Where to hit him? Heinz Ward knows it's getting late early. For all intents and purposes, they need a touchdown today to stay alive in the postseason race. Brad Wing on his son's 10th birthday gets it away and a fair catch as for it will carry into the end zone 56 yard punt for Wing to come over here and check the iPad every time after a kick or a punt. Tell me what you're looking at. So here we're just kind of looking to see what the defense was doing. You know got to see where you know where defense is lining up what we're trying to block all that different stuff. You know we got a new PP back there. Got to try and help him out. So just really looking to see what the defense is doing more to, uh, you know, help him in the back there. What about if it was a field goal? What would you be looking at? So field goal, I'm looking to see, you know, where the laces are because, um, you know, trying to make Brad's job easier too. So if he doesn't have to spin the ball, then it's a really good snap. So hold on, as a long snapper, you have that much control over your snaps that you can put the laces where you want to for the holder? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Rex Sunahara all smiles. This guy's had a, a wild athletic journey. He started his college career playing basketball for Danny Hurley at Rhode Island. Talked to him before the Final Four about Hurley. He said, the best coach I have ever played for, knocked away by Scott. And sure enough, he was able to back that up by winning a national championship with UConn last week. You go from playing basketball at Rhode Island to being a long snapper at West Virginia. There's a lot of athleticism. And as he proved, film work there. You ever hear a long snapper doing that much film work? Matching laces is a lost art. And obviously, you get up there to the highest levels of football, this being one of them. Those guys are good enough where they can adjust it a quarter turn every time they throw it back. And as you're a holder, which I was, it makes your life very, very easy. To the slant, and Michael Bandy. Was able he's to pick the, up six. And he's hitting the smelling salts on the sideline, too. Like, I, yeah, he's I'm not your normal long snapper. I am for it. 
Is there I've never heard that about the laces, G Mac. I, I was blown away when he told me that before the game that he could control it that much. That is wild. I have a newfound respect for kickers and long snappers. Those guys are ridiculous, man. I mean, those long snappers up there in the biggest show, <laughs> they're unbelievable. Up next, six of eight on third down. Batted away at the line of scrimmage. Delonte Scott got his hands on a couple on this possession. And it also looked like Downey was in there as well. Coming off the left-hand side, one-on-one. -on -one. Saw that quarterback start to release, knowing he wasn't going to get home. He puts that left arm up to deflect the pass. Great stand there by San Antonio defensively. Things were reeling a little bit for their offense. Had to have a stop. They did. Now they'll give it back to them. Trell Bonds back to receive this punt from Race Porter and a delay a game. Five yard penalty. See, Cole, you Still gave the down. long snapper and kicker and punter way too much love, and now they take a delay a game. Come on, man. It's a law of averages right there. Law of, you give them love, and then now you have to take it away. It's just the way things work. Return to the mean. That's all it is. Brian Corey's the long snapper for Houston. Played it. Division three Carnegie Mellon and was a school record holder in sacks before moving on to the indoor football league, the spring league, the CFL, XFL, and some time in the NFL. They come after it and almost got it. And that thing checks up and takes a San Antonio bounce, a 29 yard punt. We came to the XML wraps up tonight. DC in Seattle to take on the Dragons, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. DC beats Seattle 22 to 18 in week one. So here's a look at the standings. Vegas and Orlando have both been eliminated. So everybody live in the South, much of that guy's chip love and desire. And we could have a three way tie in the North with the Seattle win tonight. Tiebreaker is division record, and DC still a huge advantage there. Tonight's game's going to be off the charts. I think, look, it's close because there's obviously three great teams in the North, but it's, I would say that Seattle might be the most interesting team. And they just signed Philip Lindsay, the former Denver Bronco, a guy with a lot of juice at running back. So a team is extremely interesting. DC's first loss of the season came last week against Orlando. And meanwhile, Seattle red hot. DC with a win would host the North Division Championship. Uh, keep him undefeated. You saw Ryan in division, I should add. Ryan Lewis helped off the field a moment ago by the athletic training staff. John Hilleman. Able to pick up eight on first down. You hope Ryan Lewis is okay as he was helped off now in the medical tent. Very emotional as he was going to the sideline and San Antonio with another nice first and ten run to open the drive. Now what can they do with it? Zach Kerner still hadn't played this half after getting injured on his interception to end the first half. Hilleman with a spin move. And he might be just short. Nope, it's good enough for a first down. Good individual effort here. Wasn't there initially, but you see him spin inside. Beckett over pursues, gets north and south and picks up just enough for the first down. Run it again. And Hilleman picks up three. Let's go double F up. Fake bad frog pin. Double F up. Fake bad frog pin. Play action? Yeah. Big play action. So pin, you have a post and an in. 
So this will be your big post, and this should be your in off of hard play action and full protection. All those runs are set up this one, and they have to dump it off to Hilleman. And it's a flag down in the secondary. Goes as a first down and a gain of nine. Defense number six. Okay, so that's more than five. They're going to decline it. Yes, sir. So ICT, Houston, 36, yes, ICT, except legal, legal contact. contact. 36 of the defense. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first down. Midway through the third quarter. It was a good job of the play action. The post is actually coming from the right hand side, not the left hand side. You see number 36 right there with the contact and the contact. And the reason why it was a legal contact is before the ball was in the air. So you see the contact there. It was a good call by the official, but didn't need it, obviously, with the first down conversion. Play action again. Cone gets sandwiched. Another sack, Glenn Logan leading the way for Houston along with C.J. Brewer. Fourth sack of the game for the Roughnecks who came in leading the league in sacks. And there's just nothing that Jack Cohn can do right here. Left guard gets destroyed inside. And as he's coming off of his play action, he already has Glenn Logan who's right in his lap. The right side collapses as well as Norman Price is pushed back. Just nothing the quarterback can do. Omaha, Omaha, we go. It's a dangerous to run play action with a struggling O-line. The screen get a few back to Landon Akers. They wanted a late hit. San Antonio's out of challenges. Heinz Ward used it on his first defensive Let's possession. Go Let's go nickel, nickel, nickel. Let's go trips right alpha. 74 rib. Ice smash wide delay. So here's your Y. That'll be your outlet if your smash isn't there. You might have a smash in one-on-one -on -one here. Cone. Try to run. Oh, and he got walloped. And there's a flag on the play. Jordan Mosley. Delivered a hit. We got two fouls, guys. We got two fouls. We actually have three. So hang on, hang on here. Wow. DeAndre Johnson is still so down, down, injured. What do you have? Cone with a wow. Mm. Defense. Oh. Holding offense for 59. Okay, so we have two nice. fouls. Yes. One each team. Savante Beckett is also set. injured. It's going to be a hold. Yes. We're going to replay the number again, Milton. And Hold 59, 59, San Antonio, OH. There are fouls by both teams. The penalties will offset. Holding the three of the defense. Holding the 58 of the offense. Ball Bill will be returned to the previous spot. Third down. A good job of stepping up. Nothing open downfield. Saw the hold downfield. That looked like. It was where Jack Cohn was going to go, but look at the finish. Understanding the down and distance, knowing he, to, he also says wow at the end as he gets hit hard along the sideline. 268, Eighth play of the drive. Vegas. Four man rush. Pocket collapses again. Don't have to move his feet. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the excitement from behind Jack Cohn coming from Charles Wiley. And San Antonio just seems severely limited in what they can do with this offensive line play. And when it's obvious passing down situation, it's really difficult. They're a team that absolutely has to stay on side and stay on schedule because their tackles are really struggling against the speed. They're going to try a 59 yarder here from John Parker Romo. And this one's going to come up short and wide and no good. 
All right, we got a situation going on. Houston had too many men on the field. San Antonio has another chance of fourth down, and instead of attempting a long field goal to put the offense back out there, with Jack Cohn trying to convert here on this fourth and three. You want a pop or a fade? Who's he talking to? Vasher, maybe? They're 7 of 12 on fourth down this season. Vasher would be the guy you would look at. Vasher and Alizé Mack are the two most reliable guys you have. 18 and 88. They both have good size and length. I would say Fred Brown would be in that mix too, but he's on the list after dropping a pivotal third down just to drive a go. So you can still trust him too, but you got to get him feeling good about himself. Pivotal play for San Antonio. Got to work the tight end side. That's where you want to be, left side. Kerner, uh, pardon me, quickly. Cohn, and it's dropped by Fred Brown. You mentioned it before. He had a drop previously as a quarterback, as an offensive coordinator. Is that in your mind? It, it should, but then again, he's been a reliable weapon. He's 29 years old, has played a lot of football. Ball was a little low. One that he's got to be able to handle, though. It is at the kneecaps. Not saying it's an easy catch, especially when that nose is down. But that has to be one that he's able to reel in. That's now consecutive, pivotal, mm. drive-ending plays. So now it's up to the San Antonio defense. Without one of its stars, Jack Kerner, who got injured at the end of the quarter after a long interception return. Cole is down on the San Antonio sideline. He's got Jack to walk us through what San Antonio is trying to do defensively. Jack, you're calling out ball there. You can't help it, can you? Uh, no, no. I, yeah, like I said, un unfortunate things happen. You just got to roll with the punches. I want you to take us through just kind of what you're seeing here defensively, if you don't mind, just kind of through your eyes as a safety who's normally in the game. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're obviously we're knowing that they like to get their guys in space a lot, so we're trying to do as much as we can to eat up the space when they're getting their, their good little backs in space. But uh, yeah, we see him coming out here in a two by two, two by two formation here. It's like man coverage. And Silver gets to the outside. We, we that they like to play based off of our leverage. So if they see us sitting inside leverage, then they're going to try to run out breaking routes and vice versa. If we're inside or outside leverage, they're going to run in breaking routes. So that's something that we got to be focused on as DBs, especially when we're in man coverage. Is man coverage something you guys had confidence in playing in this game? Absolutely. We have we have confidence in our guys, you know, line up our guys against their guys and we got confidence on our side. So just going to take a little bit more attention to detail and tighten it up. And I'm not I'm not worried about it, my boys. Take us through here what you see. There we go. There we go. Great tackle by Sean there. Great tackle. Yeah, they're trying to spread they're trying to spread us out, get, you know, five man box, but we know we got good guys in there that can make tackles, so unfortunately you're not gonna go the rest of this game, but I can tell you the entire defense was out there when you were on the field. And even Heflin from the other team, your teammate at Iowa came over. How does that make you feel when you know those guys are that worried about you? I mean, it means the world to me, you know. Those, those are my brothers. I treat them as such. And it just means, obviously, the world to me when they when that can be reciprocated to me. And that's why I, I won't go in the locker room and ice it up. And I need to be out here watching. I need to see that. Oh. Attaboy, eight. That's I need to be out here for my boys. I need to feed off that energy. That's what's going to heal my knee up better than anything. That's leadership right there. You Hawkeyes stick together, huh? You know it. You know it. That's that's a, from the program, Kirk Ferentz on down. That's how he runs his program, and that's how we carry it into our, the programs that we go to. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Great job, Cole. There's his teammate, Jack Heflin, former Hawkeye. And you see the brace on the knee. No helmet for Kerner. He will not play again today. We'll wait and see post game. What his long-term prognosis is. Third and seven for Houston. Three-man rush. A bullet incomplete. Trying to fit it into Bandy. Did they go zone that time? That time it was actually man with a plus one. So they went cover two man. There were two safeties really deep. And then underneath, they were playing man across the board. And when you have cover two man, he referenced the leverage, you play it inside leverage. That's why the outbreakers are your friend. That time they got fooled and they had a guy for the quarterback run as well. It was just a good, solid execution there from Jim Herman's defense. 
Trell Bonds back to receive San Antonio needs something good to happen. We're late in the third quarter. Here's Bonds from the 15 fumbled it and Houston had an inside path on it. Now they got to untangle everybody. Turned into a game of hungry hungry hippo underneath there who came away with it. Wow. And Davis is able to recover it for San Antonio. I don't know how he got that. As you can see, the ball's muffed initially. It looked like, oh, it's still bouncing around underneath there. I mean, Ben Davis is nowhere near the pile, and there he is, gets on top, and then pulls it away immediately. Fortunate break there for the Brahmas. Right, Corey, the long snapper had it right there to take. Well, ben Davis played for Nick Saban at Alabama. And no matter your ranking coming in, he always pushes to his guys who want to make it to the next level. You better be able to exceed, excel on special teams. Absolutely. And right there, I mean, a little lucky, sure, that the ball bounced your way. But, man, as soon as he had a hold of it, that ball was going nowhere. They'll run it with Jaquez Patrick, who picks up three on first down. Cole, this San Antonio offensive line has been rebuilt throughout the season. They have really struggled. How can Jack Cohn and play caller Jimmy Johnson help them? I think it's that quick distribution, Tom. Something Heim was Ward emphasized to us in meetings this week. Just get the ball out. Gets it out, and that's good for a first down to Akers. Pickup of nine. And that's a good play on the RPO. I agree with Cole. I mean, get the ball out quickly, but receivers got to make the play, too. I mean, there have been a couple drops today that are borderline inexcusable. This will be another run pass option where if they like the numbers to the right hand side, he could run the football to the right. That's Patrick with the run and Bryce with the stop. Obviously feels like a lot, but it's worth reminding everyone this is a one possession game. All you have to do is just put one drive together if you're San Antonio, convert on the three point conversion, it's a tie ball game early in the fourth quarter. Over the middle to Alizé Mack. He's got a first down. Pick up a 14 that time. And an injured player for Houston as we approach the end of the third quarter. There is life for San Antonio. Down nine, which in this league is a one possession game. As the Roughnecks pressure continues. We start the fourth quarter. Houston leading by nine. Cohn thought about going deep and said checks it down to Jacques Patrick. How about the coverage down on the back end? Every time they want to go deep, it seems like either they don't have time or Houston's got it covered well. No, it's really impressive. They've been very disciplined at the second and third level. Those safeties, while it is an aggressive group in the front seven, meaning linebacker and defensive line, the safeties have been very disciplined. They haven't let anyone get behind them all game long. Second down seven. Patrick got tripped up. Drew Lewis out of Colorado with a tackle. Let's go. Nickel, nickel, nickel. Let's go. Seven fact. 269 dragon card. Oh boy. Three yards, guys. There you go. Here's the same play. They've run this a few times. It should be. A really good play. Slant in the flat right here. Take the slant. Should be a lock. And Cone can't get rid of it. Another Houston sack. It's a huge pressure play to get to him before even a slant can come open. And it was well covered, too. The slant took a half second to materialize, but just a really good job up front. You see the pressure off the right-hand side, not on the same page. Right tackle and Jaquez Patrick not accounting for who is going to wear. 
And it results in a quick sack and a big miscommunication there by San Antonio's offense. Chauncey Rivers, five games in the NFL, and here in the X, a huge sack. There's a flag down. Scrimmage before the ball was kicked. Number 20 kicking team. End of the kick is the 13 yard line, so they can have it at the 18 yard line or? Out of bounds, out of bounds inside the 35. The ball comes back to the 35, so that's where we're going to go from. Up early. Number 20 kicking team. The league of motion. Number 20 on the kicking team. In El downfield illegally this five yard penalty will be added to the end of the play which is XFL rules the first encouraging down returns instead of kicks out of bounds and so they'll bring this thing all the way out to the 35 yard line Padres have won two of three in the series after the Braves walk off on night one Silvers swings it out and Max Borgie stays in bounds and found some room and takes it all the way down inside the 40 on a tough 21 yard run. You have to wonder. I mean, this San Antonio defense has held up extremely strong in the second half. Obviously, gave up the touchdown, but that was on a short field as you see Borgie catching the swing and getting upfield a little slow to get up to after he kind of lands on the ball. In. You have to wonder, is the dam about to break for the Brahmas defensively? He had 365 pounds laying on top of him on that tackle as well. Pick up a two. Pass to the face, offense number six. Say that again? There was not a pass. There was not a pass. It was a running play. It was a run. run. It was a run. Pass to the face, no, offense number six. Pass to the face, offense. Offense number six. Pass to the face. That's going to be a 10 yard penalty. Karina, was it dead? Was it after the play? Huh? Was it dead? Yeah. It was a dead ball foul. Okay, so we're going to attack this on. Hey, are you calling an answer face or unnecessary roughness? Dude, slow down here. We're looking. We're looking okay. here. If if you've got hands to the face and it's a dead ball foul, just pick right. it up. Okay, so we're going to pick this up. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Huh? Pick up the flag. Let's go. Pick you mentioned that Dean being the extra eyes uh, on penalties. He's also there is no foul. An administrator can move this thing game. along. Absolutely, and I, they feel like they're deliberating. They want to get it right. The officials want to do right, but. If it's an inconsequential penalty and they can't get a good look at it, Dean just says, pick it up. And right there, they were a little bit of confusion as to whether or not it was during the play or after the play. Ultimately, they decided no foul should be called. So second and eight for Brandon Silvers. Again to Borgie. And Borgie can't make it back to the line of scrimmage, loses a couple. The San Antonio defense is putting up in professional football comps historical numbers. They allow only about 16 points a game, yet they have a losing record. The only team to lead the league in NFL history in scoring defense and not win more than they lose are the Browns in 1956. How do you solve that problem? You draft Jim Brown. <laughs> That is quite the conundrum though and teams know they can be a little bit more conservative against San Antonio and still ultimately win because San Antonio's self inflicted mistakes have been such a huge issue for them all season long. Wade Phillips wants to challenge something. Face mask number eight on the running back number 22. Okay. Yeah. Dean Benthino breaking it down already. Frank, he's challenging that there was a face mask on the tackle. On the tackle, yeah. On the tackle. Correct. Okay, we're we're looking at it. Get a good shot here. Handheld shot. I've got a right hand. I see a right hand. Looks like it's on the jersey. I didn't, but there was face mask. I didn't have him 15. On the run. Right there. Let me let me see if we got an end zone. Go to the end zone shot. I see hand on the mask. Yeah, let me see this. Go ahead. We got it up there, though. 
right there. This is the guy. Test 15, run it back, run it back. Test it. Go slow. Kind of turns it, but it's tough to see if there's a grab in there. Okay. He has to determine, obviously, Frank. if there's a grab. It's a close call here. Again, go ahead. It's almost like it, he, he swipes it. All right, Frank, a after review, the ruling on the field stands. There's just, I can't tell if he actually grabs the mask or if he just kind of swipes he, with the he, open Dean hand. He's going with stands because he can't see if he grabbed the mask or if he just swiped it with his open hand. He doesn't see a grab. He sees him go across with his hand. All right, so the challenge will be unsuccessful. I, I want to ask Dean no about it. Dean, we, we see as viewers and fans, we think we see a face mask. What's the difference between a swipe and a grab, and how do you make that determination? What, what we're looking for is something clear. Does he actually grab the mask, or is he reaching and just swipe across? And that's why the head turned. I never saw a shot that showed clear grab of the mask. There were two, actually two attempts, one on the shoulder pad, one across the side of the helmet. I never could get a shot that showed him actually grab the mask. How much does it have to do with having clear, indisputable video evidence to support the call, Dean. How much of that has Absolutely. to do with it? We're going to add the, if we're going to add the foul. We want to see it. We want our officials to see it live on the field, and we want to see it in replay. I appreciate the insight and transparency on third and 11. It goes incomplete out of the hand of Brandon Silvers. And that San Antonio defense comes up with another big stop. As you can see, just a massive turn of events right there. As it looked like Things were going in the direction of Houston. Running game was starting to get going a little bit. You thought maybe he grabbed that face mask, but I actually agree with Dean. There was nothing that I could tell without a shadow of a doubt to tell you for sure that the face mask was grabbed. It certainly looked like it might have been, but I can't confirm it with video evidence. Pretty good punt here by XFL Rules, a 28-yarder. And they have had a bunch of injuries up front, dating all the way back to training camp. So they are doing their very best, but ball has to come out of the quarterback's hand. Jack Cohen has to understand that, and the receivers have to understand that as well. Now first and ten, Jack Patrick rumbles for a first down and shuffles his feet for a few more. It's a 19-yard run. Patrick a little banged up as yeah. he's going to the sideline. But a great job here, just a little kick out. See that left guard pulling across, Mike Brown kicking out the end man on the line of scrimmage. And there's a nice hole that develops inside. They'll keep it on the ground. This time with Hilleman. And he's able to find two. The analytics folks will tell you that Having a successful run game has no impact on the play action. But play action seems to be a key for San Antonio because <laughs> that's the only time they even have chances to get guys open. Well, I mean, their, their drop back passing game is still good. I mean, I, I really like their drop back. They just had a couple drops, a couple inaccurate passes, and some really nice defensive plays that resulted in tip passes. And a bunch of drops. Fred Brown squeezes this one and turns it into a two-yard gain. Where did you hear that, Tom? That sounds like something PFF would say. <laughs> I have airplane Wi-Fi. Third and six now. Can we go on Dallas? All right, going on Dallas. Oh boy, he, you hear? I was gonna say, let's not do that. <laughs> Dallas is, means you're going on two. And he asked his offensive line, "Hey, can we go on two? Can we go on two? He didn't seem real confident. Play clock at one. Here comes pressure. Cone got rocked again. Yeah, there's a smile. You would too if you're Jordan Mosley and he came in basically untouched. And a good job here. You're going to see pressure off the left hand side. It's called a green dog. When the linebacker on the left side blitzes, the guy that's covering the person that is blocking him also can blitz so he wraps right around times it perfectly and results in a big hit before the ball can be released long punt from wing 
And return out to the 19 yard line. Let's listen in with San Antonio head coach Heinz Ward. How are we getting sacked on quick game? Punt. That's so crazy. We're getting sacked on quick game. Now they have gone to the well on that play probably too, too many times. They run slant. First time it was wide open. The second time it was wide open. The third and fourth time that they've run that exact same play on a similar down and distance, it's been covered up, and the pressure has arrived before he can get rid of the football. So they need to have some type of adjustment off that where they show the slant, and then he turns it into a double move, fake the slant, and then he goes right behind the defender. But they got to promise that they can hold up for protection before you can call someone like that. Off inside left. Delante Scott was ready for it. Did you see him hop before they even got the play call out? How did Delante Scott know it was coming? Well, you hear him right here. Watch him react as soon as he checks it to Bucks. Bucks, Bucks, Bucks. Hey, 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 it's running inside. It's running inside. He gets there immediately. <laughs> And they couldn't get the negotiation <laughs> between the offensive line and the quarterback done fast enough. But he recognized the play and made a big stop in the backfield. He almost got the Silvers there. Now deep ball incomplete. And there's a flag back at the 25 yard line. Number six. Off pass for six, coach. So that's what he's calling. The You're going to see right there. Travell Harris tries to create a pick yeah, right for one of his other wide receivers. So what, what number? And you're going to see him watch. It's a good call by the officials. They'll six. decline it because OPI. they're already behind the sticks. Dale, play that again. We'll set up. Offensive third and number 12, six. Penalties decline. Third down, guys. Stop. This is a Offensive good call six. based on how things are done. Watch right here. Check. He kind of tries to get up and get in the way of the defender, and they were able to call it. That was a good job there identifying that. And now it'll set up a critical third down for San Antonio's defense. Silvers wings it to the outside, and we got another flag down. Bandy had the catch for a pickup of nine. Holding defense number 21. Oh Holding boy. Defense number 21. They're going to take it because of the auto first. And Sean Williams. Let's see. Here's Hines Ward can't believe it. Nearly to the midway point of the fourth quarter, had a chance to come away with a big stop and get the ball back. Yeah, that's a killer right there. Especially when you're off the field, fourth and four. Now you have to bounce back as a defender, a defensive back in particular, very short memory. Grab a guy's jersey, results in an automatic first down. Coverage team still has to be good, obviously, to get off the field to give your offense a chance. Shifty move at the outset to pick up three for Dejon Lee. Pardon me, Bryson Aileen. AJ Smith, the OC. Trips right, red 14. Trips right, red 14. Here we go. Trips right, red 14. I want right. This should be get have a chance to throw this one down the field. Incomplete and no flag. Trying to find Salter. Then quickly another third down. Blue check Spurrier Z switch corner. Blue 
Here the switch corner. That's right here up top. Wearing a mask. It's not in the stands. But he can probably <laughs> run that route beautifully. Silver's hit from behind. Delonte Scott putting his imprint on this game. It's a loss of nine. And the Brahmas are going to have fantastic field position in a run one score game after this. And a great job around the left hand side. You see him set up the left tackle inside. Just continues to work. Run the loop. And he drops Silvers there in the backfield who's trying to step up trying to buy a little time. But he doesn't have long enough as Delonte drops him for a huge stop. Landon Akers turns up field. We've got a flag on the play. And this will be a hold back at the 42 yard line, a 51 yard punt. 18 on the return. All this official communication sometimes sounds like air traffic control as they get it settled out. accepted. 45. Dean, we need a spot. 40 to spot. is your spot. Minus 45 is your spot. During the return, holding return team number one. So the Brahmas will have it move back just a little bit. But with 544 to play in regulation, they have a chance to make this thing interesting. Delonte, two big plays for you on that last series. First, take us through that first down when you knew it was going to be a run play. What did what signaled that that was going to be a run? You were able to jump and make the stop in the backfield. Uh, just the stance of the O lineman. Um, you know, uh, the the tackle he'll be more up on the line, more square feet, and uh, obviously it's going to be a down block or it's going to be a base block. So it's just I just read him, and then I just go to my next read key and. Uh, Whoever got the ball, and that's 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 what my next assignment is, and just gotta go back there and make a play. How did you get to the backfield on the sack to get the ball back? Uh, that whole series, oh, well, honestly, I mean, a couple series, I've been working this tackle, uh, getting my rushes, uh, just staying faithful to my rush, man, not giving up, uh, just keep keep working my moves, uh, taking whatever he gave me. Uh, that rep, he gave me the outside, so I went ahead and tacked it. I mean, I tacked his outside, uh, spiked his hand down, come around, get the quarterback, trying to get the ball at all costs. Uh, wait for the quarterback. That didn't happen, but I got the sack, so it got us off the field. No offense out there. We're going to go get this touchdown. We're going to win this game. And uh, that's, that's what we came here to do. So thanks, Devontae. Yes, sir. Thank you. That was great hustle by Cole Kublik and showing his best side. No limp, though. Impressive. I'm glad he's okay after bending over backwards, quite <laughs> literally, to get that interview. Oh. Didn't know one of the sides was better than the other. Oh, there is second and 12 after a loss of two. Jack Cohn delivers a Hilleman and he gets hit immediately by Caleb Rice. No game. Chris Button, how about the Houston defense? Yeah, they're glad that that last drive was sustained a little bit from that San Antonio uh, penalty, allowed them a little breather. They were gassed coming off the last time. And by the way, our guy, Trevon Mason, who had the interception, not going to play in the rest of this game. I asked him what was the matter. He said, I told you my hip hurt. He's selling it. You got to get back out there, get another pick. He didn't have a single interception his entire career in Arizona. They had one to set up a touchdown here today. Hilleman couldn't squeeze it. And that leaves fourth and 11. Mason out of the pads and everything. Hopefully he'll be all right for the stretch run because if this thing holds. Houston's obviously going to be punching their ticket to the postseason. So San Antonio forced to punt it away. Travell Harris from the 20.
The nine part docuseries Player 54 gives you an all access look at XFL players and coaches. Episode 6 premieres Thursday at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific on ESPN2. All episodes available on ESPN. Cole McDonald, a big part of it, talking with Danny Garcia and Dwayne Johnson during his tryout. Thank you. He'll be the well, man. Next can clinch a berth in the South Division Championship with the win here, and McDonald and a quarterback. He'll obviously be the man here. Four-minute situation. Obviously going to lean more towards the run. This would be a spot that would feature his skill set nicely. He takes a hit from Scott after he handed it off, and it's a pickup of a couple. Is it tough for A.J. Smith to call runs? <laughs> If you do too much of it, you'll get there. kicked out of the air raid family. So, and make sure we get this down. Give me Chicago. Right. Tell them play clock too. Party. Tell AJ to tell them play clock. Yeah, roll that. Go Let ahead. it keep going down. Let it keep going uh, down. Miller, Tom, Miller, Miller, Tom, Miller, Tom. I'm telling you to tell him to tell him in the helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> technique. Technology of this football game of operator. And you hear him say Rolex too. Sometimes when you say clock, you don't want to say clock. That's too I don't dangerous. Want to say it's like a curse word, but clock means you go up and spike the ball. So you have to come up with a different word. So he said Rolex. You heard on the side. Want to know why? Because you're thinking about time. Okay, we're going to be real simple here. You're going to play in four minute offense. Rolex we're means that after you win this game, shrink. you're going to be yeah, celebrated shrink. and you can afford a Rolex. Shrink. So just connecting the dots there is my assumption. Can you get on board? Perhaps you're more of a Rolex guy. I'm more of a Timex guy. Fair enough. But I mean, if it's Timex, what it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't care. I don't care if it's Apple Watch. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just anything that would lead you to think about the clock without actually saying the word clock. That's right. Unless you try to go with tag. That would be difficult. It could add some confusion yeah, to it. You tag some receivers from time to time, so that wouldn't be a word that I would be. Real inclined on go. using. Here we go. Man man. Brandon hey, Silver's back in. I was like, here we go. Blue F win on one, right? So here's your F right here. Looks like they're just going to give him an option route. Sounds like they're willing to throw it in this spot. Against man, they got a chance. That's Cedric Bird. Silver's looking the other way, and he's intercepted! San Antonio back in this game with the pick by Cameron Kelly. Everything was cool and comfortable, and now it's gone sideways for Houston. Give it to him. And look at that guy in a sombrero. Second pick of the season for Kelly. Such a critical error here. You're late throwing it to the sideline. You're looking inside it initially, and then you try to get rid of it late. But immediately, the defender's going to be able to drive on it. And San Antonio looked like clock was about to strike midnight, but now they have new life because of the mistake. Offensive line holds. Cone delivers. Caught for a first down. Landon Akers with a gain of 15. Cole Kublik. Cam, take us through what you saw on that play allowed you to get the interception. Uh, he was in man. I just was trying to guard my man. Turned around. God just threw the ball right to me, basically. That's what it felt like. You make it sound way too easy. Ah, uh, man, it, it ain't that hard. You just got to work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Two picks on the season. They both come against the Roughnecks. Patrick straight ahead. Gain of three. Of course, a reminder for everyone at home who's looking at the scoreboard saying, why are they not going no huddle? Why are they not going as fast as humanly possible? Remember, nine points in the XFL with the three-point conversion is a one-possession game. So. Now, with this part of the field, you can be mindful not just about scoring and getting the three, but also with how much time you give back to the other team. Vegas. Out of the two-minute warning is second and seven for San Antonio. 
Jack Cohn gets sacked again. It's Trent Harris who got him. Two timeouts remaining for San Antonio. That is sack number six for Houston. And a great job here with the TE, the tackle inside. He's the one that sets the pick on the left tackle so that the defensive end, the E and the TE, can swing around and make the play on the quarterback for the sack. Excellent game up front by Houston. Nine point deficit is a one possession game. Patrick on the screen. Takes it down to the 20. Gain of seven, fourth down coming up. Clock still rolling. And now they'll use a timeout. For all intents and purposes here, season on the line for the Brahmas. Got to expect with how they've played up to this point, you got to be thinking pressure from Houston. Got to be anticipating pressure here. I would call a seven man protection. Obviously, five offensive linemen, but two backs or a tight end in the back to block him up, anticipating heat. Mac, X fade angle on Dallas, ready. So here we go, fourth and 10 for San Antonio. All right, your X is to the top. They're probably gonna have a one on one. It looks like a pressure look right now. There's your X. Well, they look at him on the fade route over the top. Four man rush. Cone going that direction to the end zone and a flag down. Ajane Harris had the coverage on TJ Vasher. Yeah, I mean, I've got probably starts at about the three. They may spot this one all the way down at the two. Pass interference. Or three is a defense. Penalty is the first down to spot the foul. Vasher a little banged up at the end of that route. He'll come out of the game. It was a great look. They had the matchup they wanted one on one. It was a well thrown ball. And I think if not for J.J. Harris grabbing at his jersey, it might have resulted in a touchdown. Here's Patrick. He is in. Touchdown San Antonio from two yards out. And now the Brahmas will have a chance to tie it with a conversion for three points. Hines Ward and the Brahmas have not even gone for a three-point conversion all season. He was asking for a fade. Remember, T.J. Vasher came out of the game a moment ago. Yeah, he came to the sideline. Tom shook his head, said he's good to go, and Hines had a little talk with him before he sent him back in. Cohn wants the play call again. This to tie the game. We saw our first overtime game last uh, of the league in St. Louis. Up be on tap for another. Play clock already at four. Here comes pressure. Cone hit, throws in zone and intercepted. Tolentino with the coverage on the back end. And with 107 to play, San Antonio only has one timeout left. Good news is for San Antonio, two options now. Obviously, great touchdown here by Patrick mowing through the line of scrimmage for the touchdown. And then the failed two point conversion attempt as they overheated one side and double covered the slot. But now you get the option fourth and 15 or an onside kick. And based on the conversation right now being had with his quarterback coach, you have to think that it's going to be the offense that takes the field for the San Antonio Brahmas. Fourth and 15 conversions are two for eight in the XFL this season. This will be San Antonio's first attempt at it. I 
just hold up, baby. Hey, I'm throwing it up, right? Trips right, 64, Alabama switch sneak on Vegas, ready. So instead of an onside kick, a chance to keep possession with a fourth and 15. All right, Alabama, that means all go. Can you get verticals all the way? Got to throw the ball in a tight window. Pressure coming from the edge. Cohen lets it go deep down the sideline. He stopped on his route, but there was a flag down. T.J. Vasher was the intended receiver. Wade Phillips thought the receiver the pushed off. The defender slid. You get the ball in there for pass interference. Hang you got on, hang contact. on. Illegal contact, defense number three. Second flag on Harris in the last couple contact. possessions. Number three of the defense. It's a five-yard penalty with an automatic first down. As you can see, trying to run by him, and that's a good call. As you can see, Jada Harris trying to catch right there at the 15-yard mark. Does not allow Vasher the freedom to continue on his route. The difference of five-yard or 15-yard penalty, they still got a long ways to go. Back at the 30-yard line, but the automatic first down, 101 to play and one timeout. So it's going to be on blue go after this. And you can hear right there, Jack Cohn preparing his offense for the two-minute operation after this first snap. Then you're in two-minute operation, so everything's going to be blue go. That's the cadence that he'll use at the line of scrimmage. We go. Rubnecks have six sacks in this game. Here's Alizé Mack, and he's out of bounds short of the marker and a pickup of nine. Remember, Romo, the kicker for San Antonio. He's already attempted one from 59, so about 20 more yards to get to where you start thinking about field goal range. Two makes for Romo today. Second and one run with Jaquez Patrick. And he takes a pass midfield. 14 yard carry. They'll spot the ball and Cohn's gonna clock it. An offense that couldn't protect the quarterback or move the ball through. 99% of this game has finally found its rhythm. Play clock at 20. Hey, we go, we good. It's in the middle. Let's go double left. Let's go double left. All right. Let's go same bad Oscar. Bad Oscar, bad Oscar, bad Oscar. Here we go. Another handoff to the left-hand side. They better hustle. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Ball came in a little bit late. Patrick gets whipped around after a gain of one. San Antonio has that timeout, and they'll use it here. I don't love that two play sequence there. You clock it on first down when you still had some time to call a play. If you're going to run bad Oscar, you can just get up and run it without having to have a ton of communication. Instead, you burn first down by clocking it. And now you're out of timeouts when in a perfect world, you still have a, quite a bit of ways to go before you feel real good about your field goal kicker's attempt. Playoff implications in this one and the next one. The XFL Week 8 season will wrap up tonight on ESPN2. Seattle and D.C. match up for the second time this season. That's on ESPN2. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern and also available on ESPN+. Romo did attempt a 59-yarder that was eventually negated because of the penalty, but he missed it short and wide right. Cone going to try to scramble and he gets forward. The ball came out. They say he was down before it came out, but it's a first down run. Now, this would be a spot where you would clock it. Your quarterback just ran. He's out of gas. Now you clock it because you're already comfortably within field goal range. Cole, you had a chance to chat with John Parker Romo. What do you say about kicking in here in his range? Well, before that previous play, I asked him, what yard line do you need to get to? And he turned to look back out on the field, and he said, we're close. Well, then this should be good, huh? I would think so. 
you're good to try it. <laughs> I don't know if you, let's say let's not commit the cart before the horse here. 54 yard attempt from here. Tom you've said 59 a couple of times he did fall up and he said just give me inside 60. I think we're good. OK. Get out, JP. The adrenaline might yeah. be a little greater at the end of the game. Can't afford to take a sack obviously 31 seconds left in regulation. Blitz coming. Batted down and Cohen bats it down a second time. Yeah that was close. Devante Becker with a tip. They bring the pressure, try to knock him out of field goal range. And a good job by Cone. Woo. Smart play, huh? Man. That's right, but you got now you have to alert your field goal route unit of a possible hurricane field goal situation. So 25 seconds left. If he's tackled inbound short of the line to gain, your field goal unit has to run onto the field immediately to attempt a field goal as the clock expires. Pressure from the edge. There's Alizé Mack who's up. Now you got to go. Hurricane, hurricane, hurricane. You see the towels in the air, hurricane. Saw this at the end of the TCU Baylor Iowa game. State uh, Baylor game, excuse me. Hurricane field goal operation. Clock at eight, seven. It's from 49 yards with five seconds left to force overtime. It is good! One second left on the clock. And John Parker Romo delivers for San Antonio. He knew it was good. That was the walk off as soon as he struck it. Heinz Ward knows what's on the line. You knew it was good when you hit it? Oh, of course. You said, get me inside 60. That was all you needed, right? Oh, special team special now for San Antonio. Pretty special week for John Parker Romo. Told me that he and his wife actually decided on a name for that baby girl that she's going to have here in a month or two. Pretty cool moment. They just had the gender reveal a couple of weeks ago before the game in Arlington. Hashtag girl dad. One second left in regulation. And then we could have our second overtime game of the weekend. And let's Houston's got a river miracle here. And that is a full head of steam and a move to the outside, but nothing doing for Dejan Lee. Now this sets up. One of the great overtime setups that we've seen. Let's bring in Dean Blandino to walk us through it. Fans just saw it in St. Louis, but Dean, for folks who haven't seen it, walk us through the rules. So the rules, we're going to have alternating tries from the five-yard line. San Antonio, the home team, will have the option to play offense or defense first, and then we'll just have a try from the five. If they make it, they get two points. If they don't, they get nothing. We'll go three. If we have a winner after three, game over. If not, we'll keep alternating until we get a winner. Two oh. overtime games in back-to-back -back days. How about that? It's kind of like penalty kicks. That's exactly. Right, McElroy? That's exactly. it. That's it. As you could see yesterday in the game involving the Battle Hawks, they converted their first two attempts. There was a penalty on, on the opposing team, and next thing you know, they're off and running. Cole Kubelik. Coach Ward, just kind of take you through your mentality now. Everything that's happened over the course of this game, now you go to overtime. Where's your mind? <laughs> I want to go win it, man. Listen, we got three tries. Defense is up. Alamo Doma get rocking. We'll see if we can uh, hold them to zero. Thank you, Coach. Right, if I were Heinz Ward, I would somehow figure out a way to delay this as long as humanly possible to let all these fans here in the Alamo Dome to run to that end of the field as quickly as possible. Yeah, the players, G Mac on the sideline, are trying to direct them all down that way. Yeah, to to make, hey, come down here. We need some crowd support. I like the effort. 
Chris, what's going on in the Houston sideline? Completely shell-shocked is about how you can describe it right now. They're frustrated with the penalties, the lack of calls that they say. We're seeing people pushed around on the sidelines that they thought should be called. Frustrated and shell-shocked. Alternating tries from the five. Round one of three, and they bring pressure on Silvers, and it falls incomplete. Drew Beasley put him down. He wanted a shot to the face. And that'll be San Antonio's turn to try to go up 1-0. Uh, something that Houston's defense did to San Antonio actually a little earlier in the game. All out pressure. You see Beasley on the right hand side. Nothing too high. It's a good clean hit there coming off the edge. So one X for Houston and San Antonio can take the lead. Loudest but loneliest in the building. They'll try to get a one on one up top yet again. If they can get the X fade, they're going to take it to Basher. There he is, back in the end zone. Couldn't squeeze it. Raleigh Tejada with the coverage for Houston. Both teams fail on the first try. It was a well-thrown ball. It looked like Vasher was going to be able to reel it in. Almost did, but a great job playing all the way through it. And ultimately forcing the ball incomplete, but it was a heck of an effort there by Vasher. Second overtime in as many days in the XFL. Cole McDonald now in a quarterback for Houston. One play from the five. Pressure, McDonald drilled, and it's incomplete. There is a flag. Tenny Adeluse put a hit on McDonald. So San Antonio 20. Pass interference for 20 to defense. Follow from the end zone, ball be placed one yard line. And so they get another crack at it. You see just a little collision, all out pressure yet again, trying to work a quick slant to the left hand side. Severan, you can see the contact that leads to the pass interference. How about Jimmy Herman dialing up the pressure here? Yeah, back to back plays. One would assume pressure's coming again right here. McDonald in a quarterback again. They got it all loaded up. McDonald with the sneak. No signal. And they say they stopped him. Dean Blandino trying to sort through all the bodies on the goal line back in the command center. Sure here. Okay, my far hand held is not on the line. And the call on the field is so important, too, because it's so difficult to overturn. I'm going to go to Carr. When it's that chaotic along the line of scrimmage, it's hard to see exactly where the ball is. So the call on the field is massive because you obviously have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn. And it's so hard to get that when you have that many bodies around the football. Frank, you have to review the ruling on the field stands. Nowhere to After go with it. the play, the ruling on the field stands. I was unsuccessful. If we're even after this first round of three tries apiece, we move on and tee it up again. San Antonio with a chance. Trying to get another fade to Vasher up top. Now stepped outside leverage. They wanted a false start, didn't get the call, and it's floated and intercepted, so a failure on that try. Trent Harris with the hit on Jack Cohn. So you can see 
Tried to get a little bit of help right there with having that many bodies on the left side to slow Trent Harris, the pass rusher, down. He still gets home and forces the ball incomplete. If nobody scores in his first round, then it goes to alternating possessions and sudden death. It's essentially where we are here. Nobody scored through the first two rounds. Or two tries, I should say. It's still McDonald, a quarterback. Safety blitz coming to the slant. He's in! Deontay Burnett. And now San Antonio will have to answer to keep the game alive. And you can see they go with a little bit of a switch rotation, all out pressure yet again from Jim Herman and the San Antonio Brahmas. They beat it with a quick slant inside against off coverage. And San Antonio's season for all intents and purposes will come down to this. One play for San Antonio to stay alive. Cone to the end zone. It is incomplete. And Houston wins it in overtime. Deontay Burnett, the deciding score. And Wade Phillips' squad has clinched a playoff berth.